do you remember when that started when you were a kid? Like when you first saw your mm. potential to razzle dazzle and shine? I was 10 years old, school talent show. Really? Yeah. Were you the host? Please tell me the host with like a thin little cane and like a candy strip no, shirt. No, <laughs> um, I was actually going to go out on stage and do a, um, a routine with a friend of mine. We were going to do like a Saturday Night Live sketch. And when the curtain opened up, he got scared and he ran out. And no. So the, and so the lady that was uh, putting on the audition, she goes, well, your friend left you. Is there anything you know how to do by yourself? I said, well, I can do voices. She goes, what do you mean? And I just started doing like impressions of cartoon characters and stuff. And they just started looking at each other. And I was like, okay. And they're like, okay, you're on Saturday. And I'm like, what? No. Just like that. So uh, I wound up going out on stage and someone, someone says, the best way to break the ice is with a joke. I said, well, I don't know any jokes. And someone gave, told me a joke and I said it. And I was 10 years old. I said, why did the chicken cross the road? And then I said, to check out the chicks. You know, I've it's, never heard that one. It's uh, well, it's you know, for a ten year old, that was pretty groundbreaking. If you're forty six, it sounds a little creepy, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> to check out but, the chicks. You know what? To check out the chicks, and so I opened up with that, and then I just started doing these yeah, impressions man. and stuff, and it just it went over well. Do you remember your? I have so many questions. Do you remember your first impression? Oh God, I was doing like uh, Pee Wee Herman, Ronald Reagan, uh -huh. Yogi, Yogi what Bear, your, your Pee -wee? Uh, Yogi Bear. Uh, so you had a bunch. To... Yeah, I was even doing Bill Cosby. Crazy, right? Of course. Um, I used to kill at church with Bill Cosby. It was just it was just a few, and I wasn't even saying nothing funny. It was just the fact that I was doing the voices and it of course was coming out of this kid, out of this adorable kid. I mean, you you've got so much charisma. Everybody's rooting for you the moment you walk on stage, and then you do voice like great. Of, of course, now, but I imagine even then, pretty good voices. The other question I was going to ask was, do you remember how that felt? Did that did that start oh, to man. heal something? Man, that was uh, an incredible feeling because I didn't, I wasn't sure what the reaction was supposed to be. I just remember I was like a big fan of Eddie Murphy and I saw his comedy specials and I was like, ooh, that's cool. I like that. He goes up there, he he's telling stories, he's doing voices and it's just, it seemed like that. I want yeah. that. And he's fearless. Absolutely fearless. And so um, when I started doing stand-up, you know, when I actually called myself a stand-up, all I was doing was impressions and characters. I wasn't really talking about myself. Mm -hmm. And so that took a few years for me to get comfortable enough to share real experiences and stories. And all I did was I just put the, the sound effects and the characters and the, you know, the impressions on top of that. And so it turned all of my regular stories into like, whoa. Right. You know what I mean? Secret sauce. So exactly. So instead of saying, oh, I ran to this girl and she was crazy, it's more so like, yeah, I ran to this girl and she's like, oh my God. And then, you know, like, whoa, I'd bring the room up with the, right, right. the energy and the sounds and then the back and forth. And Do you like Pablo? Because I, I. Pablo actually, uh, I remember watching Pablo early on. I got to open for him one, of those one time. Guys, yeah. Yeah, definitely. He is one of those guys. Bong, bong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do something with the knife. That's what I always say. Yeah, here you go. Do something with the knife. Here you go. <laughs> Hold my baby. Hold my baby. It's actually John Mulaney and I still say do something with the knife do something to with each knife. other. It's from what is it? What show? It's uh, Jerry Springer mm. that they encourage violence they in the encourage crowd. Violence, He's like, yes. here, do something with the knife. <laughs> knife. Giving the audience the knife. knives. Um, Pablo, Pablo actually uh, is one of those guys that you know, I don't think he gets enough credit. He, I agree. Uh, he opened up a lot of doors in Europe. Like I, the reason I started to play Europe so much is because Pablo had gone there. And he paved the way. There was promoters out there, and they're like, we saw Pablo Francisco, and we wanted to bring him out here to Europe. We know he'd do good. And then apparently he was just selling out left and right. And so mm. they're like, well, you know, this guy can do it. Well, maybe we can bring other people. And so Pablo was the first one that, that laid that groundwork. Oh, so wow. once I went out there, it's like, yeah, this is the Pablo run. I'm like, well, let's do the Pablo run. Yeah. And also the Scandinavian on stage, countries, yeah. that... Well, like, not not the same voice you did, but that sort of like he Characters, wants to do. He's very do... character driven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, one of the first guys that I saw. Mm -hmm. His thing about um, Lincoln Park. I forget it. We don't have to do Pablo bets all day, but like I, my my wife and I will just throw it on to watch it. Where he's like, they talk in two voices. It's like I don't know what to do. Here I am. Like they have two modes. It kills me every single time. So tell me about. From being 10 in a uh, talent show, then the feeling that you got. So you kind of got hooked. I got hooked when I was 10. And then, and then well, the next ahead. time I got a chance to go up on in front of people was when I was in high school and I was on the speech team. 
Okay. And so every day I'd get up in front of the class and just tell random stories about whatever. But I was getting credit for for being in front of the class. Yeah. And so that's where I got my my chops and just my my you know being comfortable in front of people. Anytime the every teacher day in front of class every wanted day. you to perform, that was always such a happy thing for guys. I hated like that. writing. Yeah. I hated reading and writing and just uh I just wanted to go up there and talk. Yeah. And even now, like I don't, nothing is ever on paper. Nothing is ever written out. Nothing's ever typed out. Nothing's ever text. It's just, it's all up here. Right. I might have bullet points for things just so I remember, but I, I cannot sit and write stuff out and try to perform it like that. It has Same. to, it has to come from here for the first time, and then if it goes well, I remember, and then I, I reapply it. I, I completely agree. They say one side of your brain dictates and the other side communicates. Mm. So if you're reciting something, it's the other side than the communicating. And I see you when you're doing your stand-up. You're communicating the bit. You're there. Mm-hmm. You're talking to them. You'll adapt. It, yeah, You'll it doesn't change. feel like it's a uh, recite. You know, it's not like, okay, here we go. Yeah, you're not just telling a joke that you wrote that's like crafted. Obviously, it's crafted, but you know what I mean? Like with an exacto knife, like you trim away the... The dot on the there, and you know what? There's some people that can do it. I I just I've never had that ability, and it's yeah. not that I can't read or write. It's just that it's it's work for me, and if it's work, I don't want to do it. What did it, like, it has to be fun before you had that outlet? And again, please know that you're in in good company here. I was a really anxious kid, and and to this day, if my wife and I go to dinner and mm-hmm. I can't tune out the people around us, I can't just enjoy it. She, she'll be like, you need to do a set. And like, I remember, it's hard to remember, but like junior high, high school, what it felt like before guys like us found a steady outlet, was it, how did that manifest? Anxiety, I had it, like health problems, digestive problems, like I needed to find a way to express myself. Um, you know, I, I only had a couple of friends back in high school and fortunately they're still my friends, you know. And, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, two, and I got two. So, you know, it worked out. I, I chose wisely. Um, <laughs> he has chosen I, wisely. I spent most of my time around my mom and my two friends. So, I mean, it was, I didn't really have moments or, or times where I felt like, oh, what do I need? I mean, I had a Nintendo, I had a stereo, I had TV, cable, and then my two friends. And so I, I felt like I was always, you know, I was always okay. Don't get me wrong, I, I, had a, I was always talking about comedy around them. Yeah. They all, they they all both knew, like oh he's always talking about this, like this is something real. Yeah, but you felt like you were okay. It's funny, um, a kid with a, two friends and a mom and a Nintendo. Yeah, right. I'm like that's a kid that and thinks he's okay. And you don't know, you you don't know if you don't know. <laughs> that's what I mean. You know? Like looking back, it's like oh, do you feel like okay. comedy was helping pull you out of something? For me, it did. It did. Yeah, it did. But I mean, you know, again, if if you don't know that you're not having the best time or it's, you know, what's on the other side of the wall, then, you know, how can you stress over it? Yeah. You may win.